uh, hopefully in the bottom of the pan. Oh, lovely crispy pastry. A massive and warm welcome to another episode of Made with Love, where we share our complete obsession and love with food with you. And we hope you're going to be excited by the recipes we make here at the Good Housekeeping Institute. I'm Maker Beck. I'm the cookery editor of Good Housekeeping, and I'm going to be making a caramelized red onion and goat's cheese tart tatin, the one you flip upside down. It's a super stylish but yet simple recipe that can be adapted for different dietary requirements. It's a total showstopper and an absolute winner in my books. And if you want to have a look at the recipe, it's on our Good Housekeeping website. So we need to start with five to six medium sized red onions. If they are big, don't worry, we can peel off some outer layers, but you want them all to be consistent in size. We're gonna be filling a pan that needs to be oven proof. So we're gonna to top and tail the onions and then slice each one into three even layers. The skin is still on at this stage. So you've got three lovely rounds and then we're just gonna peel off the skin. This is the stage at which if your onions are too big, you just peel them down to a smaller layer. And just like that with all of them. It's nice to use red onions here rather than white because they caramelize to a sweeter finish and they look prettier. Double win. The tears are coming. Quick. They're sliced up. Out the way. Actually, I'll put them over here. And back to our oven proof pan. It is super important that we can transition from one to the other, as in the hob to the oven, because we're going to cook an upside down tart. So we need the heat to continue as soon as we've added the pastry layer later on. But at the moment, we're just going to get those onions nice and caramelized. So get it on a nice medium heat first of all. Just going to add some butter. And then in with a little bit of fresh thyme leaves. Lemon thyme is also extra delicious, but not always easy to find. You can chop it up. It's prettier like this, just the leaves picked. But do get it off the woody stems because they never really soften down. It's quite a good amount of butter because we need the onions to soften without charring. So it's important to remember when you're doing an upside down tart like this is that obviously, stating obvious, the bottom is going to become the top. So we need it to look pretty in the base of the pan, not on the top. So now we arrange our onions in there. And if you've got any of the humped ones, make the hump go up because then you'll see the flat disc when you turn it up later. We want to get as many in the pan as we can in as pretty an arrangement as you can be bothered to do. And at this stage, you can peel some of the rings off if it, the onions aren't quite fitting where you want them to. And lower the heat down a bit. We just want a very slow and gentle cook now. They're in. Doesn't matter if they're not completely even, they'll simmer down now for about 20 minutes to get nice and caramelized. The onions are sizzling away gently, so we've got the time just to make a quick sauce. It's not complicated, it's just about four ingredients, but it will really heighten the experience and enjoyment of eating this lovely tatin. We've got pistachios, parsley, you can replace with any of your favorite soft herb really, some vinegar to cut through the richness of the goat's cheese, which gets added later. And to make our sauce, we're gonna be using the Maggi Mix, which scored a whopping 92 out of 100 in our Good Housekeeping Institute tests. They test so thoroughly and so rigorously. So if you ever have any thoughts about what electrical gadgets to buy before making that expensive purchase, do check out that site. It's a real workhorse. It's the only one we use in the cookery, um, in the cookery team and we bring them to our shoots too. So in go our nuts, a handful of parsley. I'll just give it a rip. You can pluck the leaves off. It's too much fuss for me stalks and all, and we're going to add a tablespoon of water, one tablespoon of red wine vinegar. With that amount, you can really add any vinegar you like, a cider vinegar, a white wine vinegar, a Chardonnay vinegar, if you're feeling fancy, and two tablespoons of 
extra virgin olive oil, and then some jazzy seasoning. I do use this all the time, but I'm going backwards here, so let me see. There we go. I like my nuts quite chunky, so that's as far as I'm going to go. Uh, and it can go straight into a little serving bowl. So it looks like our onions are getting there. This smells lovely. I'm going to have a quick peek underneath them. Check the ones on the sides especially. You want it to start to look like it's collapsing and that the butter is beginning to caramelise down with the thyme leaves. Yeah, looks lovely. And then in goes some vinegar and simmer for a couple of minutes to get it bubbling. Oh, I hear that. A couple of minutes and then we're going to set it aside for five minutes to cool and then it gets its pastry lid. So our onions are cooling and I'm going to get the goat's cheese topping on there. Ideally you want a cheese that has got a rind because it will slice a little bit more neatly but you can also put a softer log on top. We just want uh, even one and a half centimetres or so slices. I have definitely cut it with that paper on before so I've learnt my lesson. If you're not a fan of goat's cheese you can put brie on top of it, camembert, leave it out if you're cooking for vegans and replace the butter at the beginning with oil. The idea is to make a recipe work for you and do feel free to be creative and try new flavours in the ratios we've given. That lays on top. Try to fill the holes where the onions aren't covering the base of the pan. And now it's time for the pastry lid. And we're using a sheet of ready roll puff pastry. And we got a lovely email from Susan, who I applaud, who says, is it okay to use ready rolled puff pastry or ready made pastry? Because she tends to make her own. Incredible, I'd like to live in your home. I 100% of the time use a lot of cheap pastry. It's a really convenient, good product. You can alter to your dietary pool requirements, get a gluten-free one, go all butter or not. It's a super fridge standby, always in my fridge at home, and it's definitely fine to use here. So you want to cut a circle just larger than the top of the, of the pan. Rough and ready is the name of the game. Eyeballing my pan suspiciously. As soon as we get that pastry on there, you want to get it into the oven because warm pan and cold pastry means melty butter in there and we want to get that in quickly. So we're going to tuck the pastry around the outsides, tuck it down like a duvet. And it goes into a preheated 180 degrees 160 fan oven until the pastry is golden and to help the pastry get on its golden journey, we're glazing with an egg yolk. But this really is for crispy aestheticness. You can leave it as is, glaze it with a bit of milk if you have, have some, but this will help, help it make it more golden and crispy. Still tastes delicious. Right, quickly into the oven for its baking. And don't bin your pastry trimmings, you can, Encase them with anything sweet or savoury, uh, cheese and some smoked paprika, Nutella, Biscoff spread, sugar and cinnamon. Roll them up, slice and hot oven and you've got yourself a lovely little chef's treat. Our savoury tatan is golden and baked through. And now we want to let it rest for five minutes just for those juices to caramelise before we have the scary job of inverting. Please, please put something around the handle and absolutely don't do what I 100% just did off camera and burn my hand, just to remind you that it's hot. So get yourself a board larger than the top of the pan. Arm yourself with some bravery. Remember the pan is still hot and you do need a bit of bravery to turn. And hopefully you hear a kathunk as it hits the board. Don't be alarmed if some little cheeky onions are left 
in the bottom of the pan, we can fix it. You see, they have, not a problem. No one will know. Just gently ease them back into place. Keep remembering this is hot. I can feel it radiating. And we're gonna finish it with that lovely green sharp sauce we made earlier. You can sprinkle some fresh thyme over, but I just love the look of it as it is. Bit of pepper and some of that sauce spooned over. The green against the purple is an absolute color winner. This is a really good get ahead centerpiece because you can cook your onions, add the vinegar, let it cool, put the cheese on top when it's completely cool and then top it with your pastry and put it in the fridge for a day. So on the day, all you need to do is glaze it with the egg and into a hot oven. And it'll look like you've been slaving over the hot stove, but you really haven't. It's a fantastically good adaptable Sunday lunch recipe or great vegetarian alternative for a big roast. And if you wanna find the recipe, head over to the Good Housekeeping website and be prepared to be delighted by it, quite frankly. Oh, lovely crispy pastry. Super juicy, soft onions. It's my slice, so I can touch it with my fingers. Oh. I hope you've enjoyed watching along our Made With Love episode and that you will be tempted to make this amazing onion tart tatin. If you do fancy giving it a try, head over to our Good Housekeeping website and good luck. It really is... Oh. Sorry for my mouthful, too delicious, too tempting, it's super good. See you soon.